welcome to my YouTube video. My name is Suzanne Bryan and in this video I'm going to be talking about two different ways to do short row shaping at the back neck. The advantages and the disadvantages and I'm in particular I'm talking about doing uh, them from the top down. So we're going to look at this swatch first and I did the short rows in the red yarn just so you can see exactly where they were. So if this were a neck this would be curved around and this would be the back neck. This would be the neckline where you would most likely be picking up stitches and working ribbing or something else around the neck and this is going down towards the body. If this were a yoke this would be where your increases would be made. If it's not a yoke like a standard pullover, boat neck, drop shoulder where you just want to add short rows you would continue the work beyond here. So this is worked from here up this way. Of course when you're wearing it it would look like this. So let's look at this one first. This one I started the red yarn right here. Let me change the lighting here a little bit on this. I started the red yarn right here and that is not a short row. It's just where I changed from the red to the white. And then I worked over to this point right here and I created a wrap and turn. And then I worked back to here, wrap and turn. Then I worked to here, 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 and here. And you can see little traces of the wrap and turn because I'm using the red yarn against the white. So along the neck edge you can see the steps. One, two, three, one, two, three. And along the body the, the row goes like this. See that in a curve and then I came back and this is where I changed back to my white yarn. So the if you start with the shortest rows up close to the neck and working out to the longest rows what happens is the last row will be in alignment with the rest of your fabric. So I call this um, lengthening short rows. You start with the shortest ones and then each one gets longer. And of course after you work this one and over here and back you're going to pick up this wrap and conceal it then work these two stitches, make a wrap and turn, come back over here, pick up this wrap, conceal it, work two more stitches, wrap and turn, etc. Now let's compare that to this swatch. In this swatch what I did was I changed to red yarn here. This is not a short row but I worked the longest short row first. And in this situation I call this shortening short rows. So you work the longest and then they get shorter and shorter. So you can see I worked all the way over to here, wrap and turn, back over to here, wrap and turn, I'm going to adjust the lighting again. You can see my turns here. And each time it got shorter. Do you see the shorter rows? And this is where I changed back to the white yarn. So then the next row, which is the white, you're going to pick up all the wraps and conceal them in one row. But if you look at this closely, you can see that the shorter rows are going horizontal whereas the white yarn is going in a curve around the back of the garment. To me this stands out. I think I prefer this method when you're working top down of doing the shortest short rows first going out to the longest so that they maintain the curve of the fabric. Now if you were working top bottom up, let's say you're working bottom up this were bot the bottom here and this were the top. Then you would do the longest short rows first and the shortening till you came up and then this would be the neck edge. I hope I'm not confusing you here. So let's review. We're looking at both of these. This is the neck edge. Neck edge. This would be going down. So if we looked at it as you're wearing it, this is the neck edge. Neck edge. I prefer this one where the rows are going with the curve of the fabric versus this one where the rows are going straight but the fabric of the back is curving. I hope this makes sense. So now let me show you how to do these 
in the round. The short rows, of course, are always worked flat, but when you start and when you stop and you pick up the last uh, and conceal the last ones, you will be working in the round again. So here we have the start of a circular piece right here. And I've got these stitches cast on in the round, and I just started uh, with the red yarn, and I'm going to show you these are going to I'm going to work some lengthening short rows. So I'm going to work five stitches in the red, and then I'm going to make a wrap and turn. Now you can use any short row turn method you want. I'm just using wrap and turn here. It's up to you. I'm turning, and I'm going to work back to on the wrong side to the point of the next turn. So I'm coming up on the wrong side to the point of the next turn. I want to work five stitches and then I'm going to wrap and turn and now I'll be back on the right side. So this is still working flat. And of course in all of these samples I'm just using the red yarn to show where the short rows are. You would of course be working those in the uh, normal color of your garment. Now I'm going to work back on the right side to the next point of the short row okay. turn. So here is my wrap and turn from the previous short row and I'm making lengthening short rows. That means each one will be longer which of course means when I come to this wrapped stitch I have to pick it up and conceal it. So I'm going to do that. This is on the right side of the fabric. I'm picking it up and concealing it. So I pick, go take my right needle under it, go through the stitch in the normal fashion, pull the new stitch through both, and that pushes that wrap to the back. I'm going to work one more stitch because I want it two stitches past the previous and make a new wrap and turn. Now I'm using two circular needles, but you could do this on Magic Loop or DPNs. It doesn't really matter. That's why I'm not really showing you the part where I change needles. It's not important for the short rows. So we're going to work back to the next short row. Turn on the right on the wrong side of the fabric. Okay here we are. We're going to work up to the previous wrap. Here it is. Now when you're picking up wraps on from the wrong side you pick up the neck which is on the right side of the fabric. We're looking at the wrong side. You pick up the neck from the right side, put it on the left needle, and purl the two together. And then we're going to work one more stitch, make another wrap and turn. And I'll meet you back at the other side. Here we are, back on the right side again, making another longer short row and you can see our previous turn here that we concealed. We're coming up on this one now and we just put the tip of the right needle under the front wrap, go under the stitch as if to knit, pull the yarn through, one more stitch, wrap and turn. And we're going to do one more on the other end and then I'm going to show you how to conceal the last two wraps when you join in in the round when you're back working in the round. So we'll see you at the end of the other wrong side at the end of this wrong side row. All right back again. Let's move this white yarn out of the way. Okay so we're coming up we can see where our previous pickup was right here. There was where the wrap is. It was picked up and concealed on this stitch. We're coming up to our wrapped stitch. We're going to pick up the wrap from the back, put it on the front, and purl together as one. Purl one and turn. Now I'm going to switch back to the white yarn after a couple of stitches and I'm going to show you we've got these two wraps that we're going to be working once we join back in the round. So I'm going to switch back to white and we'll work on those two and I'll show you exactly how to do them. So we're on the right side approaching this wrap and turn down here and that one was created on a wrong side. 
So whenever you're coming up to a short row turn that was previously there, you work that on the row before, which would have been a wrong side row because we're now on a right side row. So we pick this up the same that you would normally do. You go under, through, and make your stitch. And now we're going to work around to the second wrap and turn, which was worked on a right side row. Okay, now we're coming up to the last wrap. And this is the one most people have grief with. We work, come right up to it like you would a normal wrap and turn. And you treat it just like any other wrap and turn. You take your needle, go underneath the wrap, go through the stitches if to knit, pull the new yarn through, and that wrap will go to the back of the stitch. Then continue. And now you have concealed all of the wraps. Let's take go to the end of the needle and we'll take a look at these. This was worked with the shortest short rows going to the longest short rows. So on this side, looks very, very good. And the other side. And you can see here what I was talking about. The stair steps will then be right underneath your neck edge and they are less visible, whereas the stitches out under the needle are following with the flow, general flow of the yarn, and I think that looks best. That's my preferred way of doing short rows for a top-down back neck shaping. And we'll review these one more time. This is the neck edge where we cast on. This is with the rows getting shorter. So you can see how it looks kind of choppy. Again, this is the cast on. This is with the rows getting longer and it looks more smooth. If you enjoy watching my videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, share my videos with your friends, and come back and watch some more. Happy knitting!